Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another great interview on our Road to DMSE series. I am excited to talk about the technologies, the companies, um, and the integrations that are showing so much promise to elevate the customer experience in automotive retail. And uh, who better to invite than Matt Neese? He's the VP of Enterprise Accounts at Automotive Mastermind and one of the leaders uh, in the work that I'm doing with larger dealer groups to rethink customer communication and first-party data management. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brian. Great to be here. Hey, so we were down recently in Cary, North Carolina at the Auto Intel Summit. We have DMSE coming up. Um, there's a lot of interest in first-party data management, smarter ways in which we can activate our data, and well, predictive insights to give dealers a competitive edge. So we have a lot to talk about today. Let's start where I find uh, we need the most clarity. Automotive Masterminds pioneered a niche space of giving dealers turnkey solutions to reach out to customers based on your business intelligence models, your predictive analytics. And sometimes people pigeonhole you like into, oh, they're an equity mining company. But as you and I have been working on projects like with the Morgan Auto Group, um, it's so much more than that. How do you communicate to a dealer today, Matt, what Mastermind is focused on? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the question, Brian, because it is something. It's a conversation we have on a regular basis. Uh, you know, we we started ten plus twelve years ago, uh, really early on with with some pretty basic data analytics that we were able to then serve up to our customers uh, and, and give them insights into what their customers were likely to do. And as we've evolved over the last dozen years, um, the resources available to us have grown exponentially, and so we've applied those to really enhance. The, the accuracy of those predictions. And, and part and parcel of that was making the data that we're working on more comprehensive, cleaner, um, and therefore yielding a lot better predictions. So it's been a really steady now over the last several years, focus, really fanatical focus on the cleanliness of the data that we have um, and the ability to ingest more data to create better and better predictions. And so what happens with that is we go from using this just for our own purposes to serve up the best predictions to our customers and the best marketing. And now we want to turn that around and say, you know, we have this really clean picture of your customer base that's been hygienated, deduplicated for our purposes, and then enhanced with all of the predictive analytics that we're doing, utilizing uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence. We want to turn that around and give it back to the dealer group so that they can use it to enhance all of their efforts, whether they be reporting, marketing, or anything else. You know, Matt, I'm, I'm glad you told the story in that framework because with the Morgan Auto Group, who was already using Mastermind, as we started to work on the CDP project, which is on a Telium platform, it became very clear that before we loaded up all the data from the DMS and the CRM and try to unify these profiles, that we had to do some data hygiene. And so we had some quotes from different companies, right? And then when we talked about, okay, well, that's just the initial cleansing. How are we going to, in a sense, have a self-healing CDP that is taking in these signals? And then we talked about, okay, clean data, let's work on marketing. Well, as I was talking to Aaron Baldwin and um, the Morgan executives, you know, Aaron said, you know, I know people think of us as automotive mastermind, but, you know, we're an internal CDP, you know, like we bring in the dealer's data, we dedupe it, we put it through hygiene, we do national change of address, we fill in data that's missing so our campaigns work really well. Why don't we work together 
I mean, we got this system down, you know, and um, with partnerships like TransUnion um, and their New Star division, which really is the experts at telephone data, I was like, wow, I never really thought of that. And now um, you're an integral part of our go-to-market strategy. You're doing what you do best, but the cleaning of the data benefits all marketing campaigns. One of the other things that dealers need to understand is that a CDP doesn't know the automotive industry, meaning it doesn't have the data, the insights, the learning to do what Mastermind does best is understand when someone's in market, figure out which best offers and models to present to them. So let's dive into this BPS and your predictive behavior. How do you see this evolving? Because once you share the data, as you mentioned, you're going to use it in your campaigns. But if a dealer group has a CDP and you update customer records with your BPS scores, I think everyone in the dealer's ecosystem benefits. That's exactly right. And it's, uh, it, it's a really important point. And it's, it's kind of the realization that we made. And I would love to say, you mentioned Aaron, he's a superstar. He's, he has helped us build out a, uh, an engineering team that is capable of, of really rapid and relevant innovation within our company. And um, as we have identified this, this use case, uh, I'd like to say that we planned on it from the beginning, but uh, you know, technology has evolved to a place that you know, I say it's, it's really come to us. Our, our desire to make our system as good as possible has really just put us in this position that we can, you know, especially in these large dealer group scenarios, but, but um, mid-sized groups too, in a lot of cases, we can make everything that they're doing and everything that their vendors are doing more effective. Uh, and, and a lot of that does come from, yes, the cleanliness of the data, the hygiene that we apply, the, the, the rigor that we have to make sure that we're talking to the right customers and we have the right information about them. But once you start getting into to machine learning and AI, um, the amount of data that we can bring to bear with S&P as our parent company and the, and the years of, of algorithm uh, evolution that, we, that we've been putting on top of this have allowed us to really create more and more in-depth um, and, and varied predictions. So instead of just, is this customer going to buy a car? We're now using all of this data to determine, is the customer going to buy a car? When are they going to buy it? Which car are they most likely to buy? Is it yours or is it your competitors? Right. And what are they going to pay for? it? What sort of deal structure do they want? And each of these layers is another algorithm that we've built into the machine learning system that's been teaching itself now for six, seven, eight years, consuming you know, millions of transactions uh, to, to really get, get more and more robust, more and more accurate. So you take all of that, you apply all that to the data, you deliver that into the CDP, and now any other marketing vendor or other vendor has access to all of that accumulated yep. intelligence. Yeah, and, and what I'd like to say is that um, this particular partnership that you and I've worked on with Morgan also um, brings real-time customer shopping signals into the mastermind, you know, BI data feed. So in the past, you know, you had your own data sources, but not necessarily tracking identity on the dealer group website. So now um, your ability to market actually improves because what about people who impulse shop? or something out of the norm happens and they're out shopping. Well, now you're going to get the signal. The signal, even though they may have not had that BPS score high enough, it's going to be like, hey, they're they're out looking at EVs or they're out looking at uh, crossovers. Uh, okay, great. Let's activate our system. So it's working both ways. Let's talk about private offers. Um, not everyone knows that you work with some OEMs to generate private offers, but since you have the OEM programs and the different you know, tiered offerings, this private offer engine could also be uh, leveraged with dealers, uh, again, bringing in the intelligence that is outside of a CDP 
but inside the ecosystem so that uh, you may send them a direct mail piece, you may send them an email piece, but hey, for social media retargeting, right? For a text message that a dealer might want to send out from the CDP, everyone could be working off the same playbook because you crafted the right private offer. Does that frame right in your, the way you're thinking? It does. It does. Just a, a really quick highlight for for the listeners out there about what that private off, what those private offers are. Uh, you know, incentives in in the U.S. and the automotive are a fifteen billion dollar plus you know industry at 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 times, depending on what's happening out there. And so we've worked using all the analytics that we've talked about. We've worked with some of the OEMs to help them be much more intelligent about how they send this out. You and I may be shopping for the same car, but the the amount of incentive I need to push me over the edge could be totally different than the incentive you need. That's right. So, so we're working with those OEMs to help them identify the right amount for each customer so that that, you know, let's just call it thousand dollar spend touches as many customers and moves as many needles as possible. So then you take that and we, you know, a big part of the innovation we've been been working on over the last several years, in addition to the um, the, the predictive models and, and the machine learning are integrations. So, you know, that plays directly into this CDP, the CDP piece where we can take these private offers that are being run through Mastermind, deliver them into that CDP so that now Morgan or whoever else, else it is has access to these, these incentives that are only available to that customer through this platform. Now you can touch them, like you said, through social media, you can touch them through your own retargeting efforts. You can incorporate that into other things you're doing and create a much more seamless customer engagement. And that's really a big, big piece of this, I think, which is, yes, it's important for you as a dealer or a dealer group to have all the right information and be able to speak consistently to your customer. But when they touch your digital retailing tool or when they touch your uh, or they receive marketing from you or they receive marketing from us, this combination of all the data in one place. Uh, allows them to have the same experience and receive the same information yep. across all of those those meetings. And and Matt, what we're talking about is really a breakthrough because uh, a dealer's DMS wasn't meant for marketing. The dealer's CRM was not made for marketing. And that's why masterminds and other technology platforms were built to fill a gap. Now, as dealer groups are realizing that um, using identity resolution and creating a customer profile that can be activated across any marketing or media or communication channel. Now they have a repository where they could accept the BI, the insights, the predictive data that you have. And what I try to tell dealers is don't try to do everything yourself because these companies are successful because they've invested millions and millions of dollars. So do the things that you can do easily, right? Um, and partner with the companies who have the data, the strategies, and the turnkey marketing. Um, that's not easy for you to build. And when dealers start to understand this, it's like, wow, not only do I understand that masterminds has their own CDP of sorts? Uh, and that's why they're effective. They're sharing data with me. So my other campaigns that I'm doing outside of masterminds have the right email address, the right phone number, the right physical address, the right signals. Once they start to see this happening, then I think this idea of automotive mastermind pigeonholing into an equity mining tool goes away. And it really is a data partnership. It's an activation partnership. It's a retention partnership. And, you know, this can apply into even service, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we're not limited just to new car sales or used car sales, but it's really the whole ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and it, it's, it's, it's a very important point. And you touched on something there that I think is critical, which is the right partners. Uh, and, and, you know, I, there's, that's, that's really at the discretion of the dealer or the dealer group, of course. But one of the things that's made Mastermind so successful over the last, let's say, five, five years is our investment in our own development teams and the ability to stay with this very quickly evolving technology. We recognize that 
Um, outside of this data conversation that we have, we've got a, a pretty clear lane that we're very, very good at from a marketing standpoint, from an act activation standpoint. We're not trying to be everything to everybody. Nope. But what we have realized is that the data that we have and, and the purity of that and the intelligence we've added to it can make everyone else better. We want to make sure that we've given that to that group so that they can then take the people that are experts at service marketing or that are experts at whatever that other lane is and have the best data. And in the meantime, those other partners are also doing their own enhancements to that, to that centralized repository that you're talking about, which yep. makes us all better. And so you end up with this feedback loop that all, again, choosing the right partners who are able to, to, to stay with technology, to keep up and to, and to meet the needs, these integration requirements, but then everybody is putting in this intelligence and everybody benefits from it. And then your, your, all of your lanes for, for customer contact just continue to accelerate and get better. You know, Matt, you mentioned this statement about partners who can handle this technology evolution. And I want to say that I've been really impressed with the speed at which Automotive Masterminds development team has worked to integrate with Telium, um, bring in the Reynolds data, enhance the CDP data sources on a daily basis in real time. Um, and, it, and it was very smooth. And I think this is important. Yes, a dealer could, who has a CDP project, could you know, use somebody for address and let's say email updates, another person for phone, they could do, in, you know, buy credit card, you know, signal data, and they could go to six or seven different vendors and then ask them all to integrate into the CDP. But it's a lot of work. Or since you've already done really all the data hygiene, plus you've developed automotive specific signals why reinvent the wheel that's what we decided to do we're not going to reinvent the wheel because the money that is generated from the cdp isn't staying in the weeds of technology it's really activating the data into marketing personalizing websites um, sending private offers or personalized offers and then determining the cadence of those communications so this is super Exciting for me because, man, I've been working hard at trying to put all the pieces together so I can advise dealers who they should consider for their size, for their business needs. And this has been a really unexpected pleasure uh, because the speed to market that we've been able to do with Automotive Masterminds is amazing. Let's shift gears a little bit. Um, in addition to technology and data, it's customer support. And at the end of the day, dealers only know what they know and they need advice. They need some coaching. How do you see Automotive Masterminds evolution, say in the year ahead, knowing that um, you're no longer just having discussions with dealers as, hey, we have a turnkey marketing and activation platform, but we're a data partner. We're a data strategist. We're going to help you, well, run your business more efficiently. Uh, I, I know that dealers appreciate the experience and knowledge of your field support team, but it, but it looks like it's also a perfect match because you're known for having very strong customer support. Yes, and it's a, it's a great segue because you you know you nobody knows this better than you probably that uh, just how many layers there are to creating this this structure. And it's very doable and, and um, it's, it's being done in real time. You've, you've mentioned it several times in today's conversation. Um, it, you know, one of the things that we're really working to, to communicate with our partners is um, when you peel that first layer back, you feel great. And as you start to peel more and more layers, you can really go as deep as you want. Um, and, and as we accumulate experience, just like you're accumulating experience in various engagements, you start running into all of those different hiccups, all those different speed bumps along the way. And yes, as a dealer or a dealer group, you can absolutely make your way there. And it's a 12, 18, 24, 36 month project, depending on how you approach it and what you dedicate to it. Or 
You can go to partners who have, uh, you know, have, have established a, a reputation and credibility in the, in the, in the uh, industry and who've done this before. And as we ultimately look at it, um, the amount of time that you could save, the amount of headache, the, the head count, the staffing required to engineer these solutions, um, yes, you can go buy this one data set that we've got. Then you need to do the coding to integrate it. You've got to clean it. You've got to make sure that you're resolving the identities of these people that you're trying to speak with and that you're applying the right data points to the right people. And then there's all of the actual business intelligence that we just talked about, all those algorithms that we and others can apply that to, to turn raw data into actionable information. Come on. So it, just, it just keeps going, right? You just, you, you just keep being more and more. So uh, one of the things that we're really working hard to communicate with dealers and, and, and with the best of intentions is there's a lot of, of, of headache that, that can be saved by engaging early and understanding some of those deeper levels and working together to identify mm. what you're trying to accomplish and building a solution from the start to fix that rather than sort of just taking the next step. Let's, let's think of the holistic solution. Yeah. You know, there's a superstar in your team, uh, one of your engineers, Darren, and it's such a pleasure working with somebody who's not afraid to share their experience. And, you know, as we're working through what should we do about this and, uh, very calmly saying, hey, guys, I wouldn't recommend you go this way. I'd recommend this way. Um, and it's saved us time. Mm -hmm. um, so you're absolutely right. As dealers start to embark on what I'm going to call first party data management, mm -hmm. Automotive Mastermind is a first party data management expert, which has been kind of kept behind closed doors to create a turnkey effective marketing communication platform. Now that dealers are starting to say, well, listen, I need something like this, but for my whole organization, not for the things that Automotive Mastermind just focuses on. This is a perfect partnership because your executive team realized the synergistic behavior of, hey, we do these things best, but we do all these other things in automotive retail as well. We, we're not in that space, but better data, cleaner data, real-time alerts will help the entire enterprise. Matt, you're going to be down at the Digital Marketing Strategies Conference in Austin, June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Um, we're going to be talking about data hygiene. I mean, man... When dealers see that like 40% of the vehicles in their DMS are no, lo no, no longer owned by the, the people they think, they have to start scratching their head. I, I, are all my vendors doing data hygiene, right? I mean, I open data hygiene it. is a big piece of the future of automotive retail. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it is just so critical from a, from a um, you know, getting the most out of the, the, uh, technology advances that are available, uh, but also from a from a efficiency of, of of the dollars that you spend as a dealer as a dealer group. That stat you just threw out there is it's huge. It's critical. It's like the smoking gun. If 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 the data that we're seeing that you're seeing is that 40% of a dealer's marketing database no longer owns that car, that is it's just waste. It's just waste, and it's waste of dollars. It's waste of of resources, um, and potentially. Uh, you know, it, it creates an impression with that customer. I, I get people know I'm in the car business. People know you're in the car business. I'm sure they show you or bring my sister-in-law just the other day says, hey, look at this email I got about a car I sold in 2006. You know, so that's an impression. Oh, we all get them. We all yeah. get them. And honestly, uh, since I've purchased cars from multiple places and have friends, I mean, some very good operators are still mm -hmm. sending service reminders to people who live out of state. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of those examples, and it's only because they have no transparency mm -hmm. into what their service marketing vendor or their equity mining vendor or their loyalty or life cycle marketing vendor. They have no transparency in that. And we're starting to move into a time where the dealer groups and progressive individual stores are realizing, I really want to control the cadence of communication. I really want to inspect that my data is clean. I want to make sure that my data files are not dumped as CSV files and emailed to vendors. I want secure data. I want everyone working off the same playbook. 
the same customer record, and I want to control communication. This is is the future. Um, Matt, as you're talking with dealers down at the MSC, we're, you know, a lot of topics, first party data management, data hygiene, marketing automation, um, uh, really the use of AI in uh, communication, sales process, even the creative elements. There's a lot of fresh topics. How do you approach a dealer who's saying, hey, I need some help. I think you guys do a good job. Where do you start? Where's the conversation start if a dealer says, man, I'm not really sure if what I'm doing with my existing customers, with my retention strategy, you know, where do you start? How do you help them kind of get a sense of what you can do for them? Yes, it's a, it is, um, you know, how do you eat an elephant? It is a really, uh, like we've been talking about, there's a lot of layers to this onion. And, um, you know, I, I would say that the most important thing to start with uh, when, you, when you're thinking about data management is an understanding of why you're doing it. W what are the outcomes you want and expect? Um, and, and what is it that you're trying to create? W what, what is the, the goal? And, and, and to be clear, that's going to evolve as you embark on this project. What you start with won't be what you finish with. It'll be some version of it, and you're not yes. going to lose sight of those initial priorities, but you're going to uncover other areas that, that really just come to the surface on their own as That's you right. go down that path. But understanding at the beginning, what, what at a core level am I trying to accomplish is really critical to, to get that baseline established. Um, and, and that will sort of back you in to where you need to start. And it'll also sort of guide your efforts along the way. Um, regardless, and you touched on this, no matter what those strategies, goals, desired outcomes are, it all starts with that clean data. It all starts with that. Amen. That, that that baseline of information that you can be confident is accurate and that you're confident using, like we've been talking about, across all of your channels and across Come all up. of your vendors. Once you have that, you now have, even before anything else, you now at least know I'm talking to customers that own their cars. I'm talking to them at the right email address. I'm reaching them where they live. And having that to start with, no matter what your strategy is, no matter what you're trying to accomplish is absolutely essential. From there, yeah. sorry. No, no, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm 100% in agreement with that. And I like the point you made that where you start doesn't necessarily mean that's where you end up. And uh, it's so true because, you know, dealers have not had to have discussions on first party data management. They just really haven't. So they just trusted that their vendors were doing all of that. Now, what we're finding out is that many vendors weren't doing that. And that's where the waste came in. They didn't want to pay for the data hygiene. They didn't want to put in those extra efforts and no one could inspect it today. Almost like, you know, the curtain has been drawn open and we're taking a look and we're seeing some scary things. The good news is that the technology platforms today, whether you're a single point store, midsize or larger group, there's technology platforms that are well matched for you. But the key thing is, is as Matt said, Who's going to be your data hygiene partner? Who's going to be your business intelligence partner so that all marketing is um, elevated, uh, more efficient, more effective, which impacts retention and impacts uh, turn rates in the dealership. Yeah. You know, as I look forward to the DMSC conversation, uh, Matt, uh, our conferences attract decision makers. They attract uh, the technology leaders in uh, dealerships. And while some people can't make it to DMSC uh, for this year for conflicts, if somebody wanted to get an updated view of all the things that Mastermind can do for their dealership, especially those who are concerned about data hygiene, first party data management, maybe walking towards a CDP decision, mm -hmm. what's the best way for them to get information uh, that's more comprehensive. Yeah, we'd, we'd love to, to have a conversation with them. I would say, Brian, just let's put them in touch with me and I'll make sure depending on who they are and what they're trying to accomplish, either I or or uh, or the right person, we'll, we'll get them routed the right way. But there's a lot of great conversation to have around this and no single uh, solution fits everyone. And that's, I think, a really important piece for everybody to understand is that 
Um, there's no, there's no out of the box here. This is, this is something that we talked about having the right partners. We'd love to sit down, have a conversation, understand what you're trying to do and right. partner with you and the other folks that you're working with to make it work. Well, that's, um, I think a fair, uh, offer for all the dealers and marketing managers, technology leaders who are watching, uh, or listening in, uh, to this podcast. Um, if this is the first time you're listening to one of my podcasts, you should know that there are dozens of interviews with technology leaders, uh, dealers who are trying to elevate the customer experience and breakthroughs that uh, I like to share and discuss on my show. So just search for the Brian Pash podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Also, you should know that this podcast is part of the series Road to DMSC. So if you go to digitalmarketingstrategies.org, you'll see all the podcasts of the people who are coming uh, and get a feel for the speakers, the content, the insights that are going to be shared. But most importantly, since the conference is only a few days away, June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, lock in your tickets, lock in your hotel, and join progressive dealers who are looking to elevate their customer experience, who are looking for new ways to increase their inventory turn rates and to drive sustainable profitability and higher lifetime value for each of their customers. Matt, thanks so much for being on the show. Um, are you looking forward to Austin, Texas? I am. It's going to be a blast. I've enjoyed the conversation and I look forward to carrying it on down there. Come on. It's going to be an active conversation. So uh, thanks everyone for listening in. Thanks for supporting uh, this podcast by sharing it with your colleagues. And we look forward to seeing you, if you can make it, down in Austin, Texas, June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th uh, at the beautiful downtown Marriott. Thanks for listening in and I'll catch you next time on another podcast interview.